to be anxious for nothing, uh, be anxious for nothing. But if we trust God, um, you know, I hope our confidence is in him. Exactly. Shaking my head and praying, right? Um, you know, why, why are we so anxious to open back up? Is it financial? God is my source. He is my sustainer. So, you know, I trust in him. Anyway, we're not going to get into that, but encouraging us all through this to be better, stronger, healthier, wiser, and whatever it else you want to add uh, through this, it is our choice. It is our choice. And being a believer, I trust in the Lord. I stand on his word and abide by his principles. Not perfect. I'm not saying I'm perfect. However, in terms of um, my confidence being in him, um, I am encouraged in that regard. So better, stronger, healthier, wiser. Um, where, where do we see ourselves, right? Um, 2020, the year of vision, if you will. Um, I did a workshop in November of 2019 in Arizona and then another one in Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland, Towson, Maryland in February of 2020. What is your vision for 2020? You know, without a vision, the people perish. If you can't see beyond your current situation, you have no roadmap. And of course, I encourage all of us to trust God right? Uh, for direction, for guidance, um, you know, in that so that we can come out better, stronger, healthier, wiser. Uh, we may be in a, uh, what we consider stuck, uh, maybe financially, we didn't save like we should have, uh, we didn't keep up with our bodies as we should have, or, you know, whatever the case may be. However, that does not have to be our end, our outcome. As long as there is breath in our bodies, we can change that. And of course, I'm going to give you some scripture. And one scripture that I came across over the last week that I am attributing to this title um, is Deuteronomy 7, 9 which talks about the faithfulness of God. So in this situation, and I've said it before, and I may sound like a broken record, but it is true. It is the truth. God is not caught off guard, right? He knew what was going to take place in this first quarter of 2020. He is not surprised. So if we put our trust in him, our confidence in him, he will keep us. Will you get overwhelmed? Yeah, there will be some times because we are in human flesh, right? We are in the natural. So, you know, our, our, our bodies, our emotions may, you know, come at us. Um, last Monday, as I said, this Monday was a better day. Last Monday, physically, I, you know, my body was just going through so many changes in that on the way home from work i prayed the entire time because hearing the news of the love of loved one passing and then listening to other people being a sounding board for them <laughs> it's like okay i was like yeah i need to cut that off right because your body may respond differently i'm like yeah i'm praying i'm trusting god faith or whatever however our body may like oh okay you know trigger something anyway i am better i've i felt my help my strength so i'm grateful so deuteronomy 7 9 in the amplified version amplified classic version it says no recognize and understand therefore that the lord your god he is god the faithful god who keeps covenant and steadfast love and mercy with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, right? The New Living Translation says, understand therefore that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commands. So this scripture encouraged me to trust God, to continue to trust him because God is not a man that he should lie. He can't lie, right? So if he said it, 
he will honor his word. So he is faithful. So that's why we say God, when I say God is faithful, because I have a track record. He has a track record rather with me in the past. He's been provider. He's been healer. He's been more, most recently comfort. You know, he's been my peace of mind to, you know, establish me, to stabilize me, to, you know, keep me sound. Right. So he is faithful. So even in this, we can trust God. So from today, um, if you have been going through the last few weeks, you know, not knowing, uh, you know, where the next meal, where the next paycheck, where the next financial, um, you know, help is going to come from, we can trust God. Uh, for those who may be, you know, having experiences, you know, uh, health challenges in their body, he is Jehovah Rapha healer, right? So we stand on the word. I praise God because of heard of testimonies of people recovering um you know and as i pray pray believing that he is able so we pray for faith to arise we pray uh, against hopelessness we pray against discouragement and depression and trust god to manifest his glory so better stronger healthier wiser if you haven't thought about it think about it today this evening over this next week where do you see yourself Right, and I'm sure I talked about vision in the first month of this year, right? Uh, based on this uh, uncertainty that came up, we may need to rewrite our vision a little bit, right? Um, but God knows, right? This may be the time to step out there on faith with that book, with that business, you know, whatever it is. This afternoon, actually about 4.15 my time, I did my first Facebook Live from my business page, T Rose Productions. It's been live active since 2017, June 2017, but I haven't really been working it. And it's like, you know what? Get out there and, um, you know, let people see, you know, who T Rose Production is. And it was, you know, simple. I think it was 11 minutes, 19 minutes, whatever longer than I expected. But it's like, hey, who is T Rose Productions? So, I am preparing for whatever the Lord has. Um, yeah, you got to go back and do that. I didn't have many viewers, but it's okay. It's their live. <laughs> and, um, you know, it will stay up and people can watch it. But what is it that you need to do, that you need to step out of your comfort zone? So as I was saying, that Facebook Live is, you know, get out there um, and be prepared. So to be better, stronger, healthier, wiser. We need to prepare. We need to do our part. We need to uh, make ourselves available to the Lord when he brings opportunities our way. So for me, T. Rose Productions, event planner and coordinator. Uh, I'm a published author and yeah, I need to get to write other books and uh, speaker, right? My cousin says motivational speaker, you know, whatever the case may be. I've produced two events myself. I enjoy it, right? So I am like, God, I'm stepping up there. I'm being ready. And uh, my next thing I probably need to do is get my YouTube channel, all of these over 100 uh, Periscope broadcasts onto my YouTube channel. Um, I've been avoiding that. It's like, okay, it seems complicated. It seems difficult, but we need to be diligent. We need to be diligent in this time, in this season. For some of us physically, we may need to, uh, you know, change what we're eating, uh, you know, put the comfort foods aside. Uh, we need to get to walking, jogging, drinking more water, you know, whatever the case may be, so that we can be better effective today. I've reined in and pulled in my eating so that I can, you know, go the other direction now and realize the goal that I set two years ago um, or, well, three years ago for when I was turning 50. I'm now 51. So it's like, okay, all right. You've been playing these first few months. You've been enjoying. So let's nip it in the bud. So what is it that you need to do? God is faithful. He will bless us. He will pour out his, um, you know, unfailing love on us. Um, and, you know, whatever we put our hands to do, if we love him and obey his commands. And this sounds like a scripture in the New Testament. God causes all things to work together for 
uh, the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose, right? So we want to make sure that we love, trust God, look to him, uh, you know, for direction, for guidance and follow his directions. Um, and we will see the victory in all of these situations. A few other scriptures that I want to share of encouragement that I posted on Facebook when they were talking about reopening the country. I'm like, have you lost your mind? Proverbs 16, and there's several verses in there. Proverbs 16, verse 3 says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. That's King James in NLT. Commit your actions to the Lord, and your plans will succeed. Have these plans been committed to the Lord? Oh, we're going to open the beach. We're going to open movie theaters and bowling. And Have they been committed to the Lord? Let's see if and how they succeed. Verse 7, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. So for some of you, your quote unquote enemy may be a bill collector. It may be, uh, you know, your job. You may have um, you know, been furloughed. You may have lost your income, your job or whatever it is, but trust God. Trust God to be Jehovah Jireh, provider, right? Uh, in the NLT, when people's lives please the Lord, even their enemies are at peace with them. So trust God, Lord, I thank you for favor. I thank you for your covering my trust. My confidence is in you so that when you call that creditor, I can't afford to pay you this full amount right now. Okay, we'll give you favor, right? Or if you've lost your job, Father God, I thank you for opening up doors of opportunity. I thank you, Lord God, that as we come through this, you already see the end. You are the provider. I thank you. You are my shepherd. I shall not lack or want for any good or beneficial thing. So we want to stay in the face of the Lord. Verse 9, a man's heart deviseth deviseth his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Allow God to direct and order your steps. In the NLT that says, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps, right? So we want to trust the Lord. This is another one, you know, where all the government is doing their own thing. Verse 18, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So those that are still um, under the premise of I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care. You know, I'm in charge. This is what I want to do. And I'm not wishing it, you know, bad on anyone. However, the word is clear. Pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before a fall. So we need to look to God in this situation and be encouraged. We need to not participate with the uh, the chatter, you know what I'm saying, that's out there. And, you know, because um, it's easy to get caught up in the complaining and, you know, the issues or whatever. We ought to pray for our leaders. Lord, give them wisdom. Give them godly counsel, Lord God. You cover, you protect, right? Hi, Evangelist Weaver, welcome. So we ought to be praying for the leaders and not chiming in that they will uh, do right by the people. Verse 25, there is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. And in the King James Version, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So these scriptures are just to encourage us. Trust God in everything. We are going to come out of this, right? We don't know when. <laughs> the right way, right? But God knows. So we want to prepare now for whenever we are, you know, released to return in the right way, in the right manner. So pray in the meantime that God would lead, God will direct, God will turn the hearts of those in authority to do the right thing by the people that, um, revival and repentance will take place, that, that those who are radical and rebellious will be brought down, right? Why are we protesting the government? Where do you have to go? What do you have to do just because you can? No, that is not right. That is not Christ. So be encouraged, be encouraged, be encouraged. 
get your plans, rework your plans, submit them to the Lord, be prepared for the opportunities that he may be bringing your way and come out of this better, stronger, healthier, wiser as we submit to him. So Father God, I come in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I give you praise, honor, and glory for you continue to be faithful. I thank you, Lord God, for uh, giving us peace of mind. I thank you for giving us sound soundness of mind as we keep our hearts, our minds stayed on you. I plead and apply the blood of Jesus over everyone connected to me whether it by Periscope, family, friends, church members, loved ones, classmates, uh, them and their families, Father God. I pray for a hedge of protection for our covering, uh, Lord God. I pray for healing to manifest in the bodies that are being challenged right now with not just a coronavirus, but cancer and any other sickness or illness you are the miracle worker. You are the healer. So I pray for manifestation of healing. I pray for strength and stamina. I pray for faith and for encouragement. Lord God, you are able. I know you to be a healer. I know you, Lord God, to work and move miracles, creative miracles even. So I thank you, Lord God. I pray for provision for those in need. I pray for peace of mind that we can uh, rest assured that you are not caught off God. And you have our best interest for your plans for us are for good and not for evil to give us an expected and minister comfort, minister encouragement and strength to those Lord God who are uh, ch challenged with preparing funeral services and celebrations in this situation for those who are anticipating the uh, demise, the death of a loved one, Lord God, you be glorified even in the midst, Father God. And we just thank you and praise you, Lord God. I stand still to see your glory manifested in the earth even now. May the, those people who are called by your name stand up, stand in the gap, intercede that righteous may, righteousness may reign, uh, holiness may reign in the earth. Cover our pastors, cover our churches, those who are now using technology probably for the first time, Lord God. You, God, be glorified, Father God, that we would saturate the air ways with hope, uh, with truth, with life, with the good news of the gospel. Father, I thank you. I praise you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're about to manifest, Lord God. So you, Lord God, arrest every spirit uh, that's contrary to your will, Lord God. I pray for mercy for those who are outside your will, outside your fold. I pray for such, uh, salvation to come forth, repentance, rededication, reconciliation to come forth. I pray for the prodigal sons and daughters to be returned, Father God, to uh, a place of wholeness, Lord God. If it's it's not their home for whatever reason, Lord God, that you, Father God, would rescue and redeem. God, you are faithful. I thank you and I praise you for each one on the live, those that will catch the replay, Lord God. Cover them. Answer the prayers, Lord God. You see what they stand in need of this day, Lord God. And I'll continue to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, I pray it with thanksgiving. Amen, amen, amen. So, let us come through this better, stronger, wiser, healthier in every area, right? Let us be diligent in what God has called us to do. And uh, no condemnation if we mess up, <laughs> right? Just get back on and, uh, you know, move forward, press forward. But God bless you. Uh, you are in my prayers, praying for you. Thank you for your time here, your support, your love, your encouragement. It means a lot. Alrighty. God bless you until the next time, Lord's willing, when we see you here again. Have an amazing, favor-filled, fruitful week. Be safe. Be healthy. God is faithful. Love y'all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you for your prayers.